In terms of this, I guess you could call it rebound we've seen. What do you think sort of shifted so the think, tide here? I think you have to know, you have to think or at least have a premise of what caused this. So this was a trade-related issue that we saw this morning. So everyone came in. You see this and we saw And we saw on Tuesday as well. And we saw it Tuesday as well. So we start to see this sell-off. So you know who knew about it? This is when Deirdre started talking about it. Bolton knew, right? Yeah. She knew. Trump knew. Everyone knew but the markets. So if somebody got a whiff of it on Tuesday. Yes, there was the uh, yield, uh, the curve inverting. It was the global growth slowing. But this might have been in the background. If they knew, the markets didn't know. And now you start to, you start to think to yourself, this happened when? December 1st and 2nd. They were sitting down at the table. Didn't China have enough time to respond to this? Didn't they? For the, for the last week? So, so now you're saying we're rallying because so China, China also Because, because China, I think, this was their olive branch. Right, so that's the thought that's going around the street now. That this was their olive branch. The President Trump makes him look good, makes him look effective, makes them look like they really want to do a deal. And now you have the market bouncing back from the lows because well, because they had plenty of time to react to this. Well, they knew about it December first. Uh, either way, poor, poor old Miss uh, Wang Zhu of Huawei stuck in the middle of all of this. So just, so just think about one last thing to put a bow on it. Right, who is China more aligned with? ZTE. Or Huawei. Well, all of them, though. They're all important. So, so listen, maybe you're right, but it, it's relatively far fetched uh, if that is the case. But, but nonetheless, we, we certainly have well, a lot of. It's far fetched to think that they didn't know about it sitting at the table from across from, across from each other because it's inept if neither one knew about it. Fine, fair enough. But either way, we've seen a lot of market volatility this week, Jeff. You've had quite a few of your clients calling in or emailing in to say, what do you make of this volatility? Is it a buying opportunity or not? And, and what's your response to them? Well, our, our, sh our short term models called a sell signal on October 2nd. We wrote about it and said if you have speculative trading positions, you should sell them. We think the lows were in on October 29th. We think this is part of the bottoming process. The downside gap today closed the downside gap of October 20th, which a lot of chart technicians look at. And if you can keep your head about you and all others are losing theirs, thank you, Rudyard Kipling. Great poem. Uh, and one of the ways to keep your head is to look at the oversold readings that's on the market right now, to look at the advanced decline line, which still looks pretty good, and to look at the earnings projections going forward. Rick, if you can do that, you'll be a, a man, my son. <laughs> uh, and on that note, do you think people should be keeping their head better than they are with this flattening yield curve? You know, I, I personally think when I look at the flattening yield curve that it, it's not going to necessarily be the type of indicator many are fearful it will be. I'm not dismissing the fact. I mean, when you have 23 basis points in a 10-year in Europe, you're negative out to eight years. Your two-year note yield is minus 62. I mean, low rates in the notion of there being a bubble, of course there is. The problem is it's not a bubble from the average speculator. It's a bubble by central banks. And we heard Jamie Dimon today talking about, you know, risk-free, the risk-free. Risk-free only means one thing anymore, printing press, okay? The behavior of central banks isn't risk-free. And the fact that they'll always pay you back in the paper they themselves print shows you that there should be nervousness when interest rates move low like this. But I will give everybody a lifeline here. I think we are very close on U.S. rates to calling a bottom on this drop. Ten-year note yields dropped from their double top, which was your first warning sign, from 324. They've been dropping steadily. The last low the market made on August 24th before it started the big rally up above into the three and a quarter area was a 282 low. Today's low intraday is 282. The midpoint of 10 year yields for the entire year this far is 282. And if you look at how much time we spent in the 280s and the 290s in February, March, uh, June, July, you will see we are now down on bedrock footing. Does that mean? The equities are going to bottom. Probably the process will be ongoing. But like our last guest, Jeff, said, I think it's full begun in a, in a solid way. But I think that we may have seen the low in the long end yields. And I think that will go a long way to calm the equity markets should they start to float back without getting aggressive. Jeff, I'll get your thoughts on this, especially when you have Randall Stevenson from AT&T responding to Becky by saying, are we trying to talk ourselves into a recession or a slowdown with all this focus on the flattening yield curve? Uh, I was at Alger yesterday with my friend and portfolio manager Amy Zhang. She showed me a chart that when the 3 to 10 or 2 to 10 flattens, over the next six months there's been a 20% rally. 
So I'm oh. bullish here. I would be buying this weakness. Steve, on Monday, you correctly felt people should should sell the kind of small dip we got then. What's your view now? So, so on Monday, when we got that, that rally coming off of the positive trade talks, we stopped right on a dime where we did before pre-market, 28.15 in the cash. Uh, to Jeff's point, we tested those lows, the, 20, the, uh, the October 29th low of, um, of 26.03. But we did breach the November 20th and the November 23rd lows. So I don't think we're out of the woods yet. I hope Jeff's right and I'm wrong. But I do think that we test not even the 2603 low. I think we test the February low of 2532. I don't think the sell-off's over. I don't think the yield curve uh, doesn't matter this time. I think it always matters.